County Board of Supervisors meeting to order. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance, following by the invocation by Reverend Jones. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We pray. That you might guide the decisions of this board. Uh, we pray that you might bless our citizens. Uh, we pray that you might bless all of our first responders, including our teachers. Uh, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This time we'll set the agenda. Does any board member have any changes or additions to the agenda as printed? Yes, sir. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Reverend Jones. Um, one of the things that I want clarification on is in, I don't know whether this is just, um, we always say that no one can bring up anything um, and it will not be voted on in this meeting. And my question is, is that the way we're governing our board? Because several instances that I'm concerned about um, the first one was a library board. Uh, it was not on the agenda, but it was voted on. And the latest personnel matter that we had, it was also brought up and voted on. So I want clarification to know whether this board is going <coughs> to operate by the way we say we're going to operate. And I'd like to have a discussion on that. Because there's been two instances where things have been brought up and voted on right that moment. Mr. Lashley, what's? Um, there's a couple of issues. If the item's not on the agenda, you don't normally address it. We do allow items to be brought up under board comment. And if an item is brought up under board comment, if there's unanimous consent to take action, then action can be taken that night. If there's not unanimous consent, then it's bumped to another meeting. That's that's what our bylaws say. So if I'm understanding correct, louder, yeah, I need to. So if I just want to make sure for clarification, are we saying that a board member can bring items up and those items can be voted on if they were not on the agenda? During board comment, a board member could bring up an item and ask that action would be taken. By our bylaws, it would take unanimous consent of the board to act that night. If the board didn't agree unanimously to act that night, it would wind up on another agenda. So what, Mr. Chairman, I want us to be able to say is some decisions are being made that are not anonymous. The latest personnel decision made was not unanimous. So I want to know how we're going to govern our board. If board members can raise issues and those issues can be voted on that night. Because I, I, because I, don't, I don't understand because we say that no action will be taken. Well, Reverend Jones, if I understand you right, you would like to add to the agenda discussing about our board policy on what items we can vote and not vote on it in a meeting? Is yes, sir. I want the, the clarification is what I'd like, because I just want to know how we're going to operate as a board, because I brought up issues that I was concerned about to put on the agenda, and I could not get a second. I could not get a second. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand how we're operating here. Well, it would require a second to get on the agenda. So I can ask to be 
something that I'm concerned, the citizens are concerned about, I can ask for it to be put on, but if I don't get a second, it can be put on. But a, another board member can bring up an issue and ask for a vote. As Mr. Mr. Lashney? Well, there's two different, any board member can put something on the agenda. In fact, we have in our bylaws, it says that anything to be placed on the agenda should be received by the county administrator for close of, close of the work day on the Wednesday prior. So any board member can ask anything to be put on the agenda as long as they <clears throat> notify the staff by Wednesday before the Monday meeting or tonight, Tuesday. So that's the normal way you make sure something gets on the agenda. Adding something the night of requires a motion, a second, and a vote to get it on the agenda. Like right now, we're at the agenda approval stage. So if you wanted to make a motion to amend the agenda, if you got a second and a vote, then we would amend the agenda to add that item. But you have a right to put it on the agenda. You just have to do that five days in advance. So if it's not on the agenda, it should not be voted on? Unless there's unanimous, unless the agenda is amended or there's a unanimous agreement to vote on it. Our bylaws say if there's unanimous agreement to vote on something, then you can vote on it. The last decision that was made was not uh, unanimous. It wasn't every all board members, but it still was voted on. Well, not voted on, but it was a decision was made. Okay, I, I don't know. I don't know how to address that. I'm not aware what situation we're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> so you still want to add? Yes, sir. I'd like to add on to having a discussion. Okay, Reverend Jones has asked that the agenda item put on to discuss uh, board policy regarding uh, voting and when we can vote, if I remember right. Yes, sir. Uh, is there a second to that? Second. Okay. All those in favor, let's see, let's just add on to the agenda. Any further discussion about the motion? <clears throat> Question. Did that require a roll call vote? I was just going to. Okay. Okay. Mr. Carter. Yes. Mr. Hips. Mr. Wolfskill. Reverend Jones. Aye. I vote aye also. Uh, the, amended, the agenda will be amended to include a policy discussion on voting. Is there any other amendments to the agenda at this time? County Administrator, do you want to ask the... Um, where would you like to put that item on the agenda? Oh, let's put... Uh, let's make it item five. I guess correction be item one under action items. Excuse me. Okay. All right, there being no other items to add, then the agenda is uh, all right. So approval of the agenda as uh, amended, adding uh, item one under action items, board policy on voting. Uh, all in favor, so you're say an aye. Uh, uh, aye. Opposed? All right. Agenda, motion is carried, and agenda has been modified. Amended, excuse me. All right, first item under... Uh, I want to welcome you all tonight. It's good to see you all here in our two distinguished guests from the City Council, uh, Nancy Simpson and Mary, Mary Lou Spiegel. Always good to have council members here. And you're pointing somebody Claudia. I don't know. Uh, there's Miss Puckett. That's, uh, I, you were hiding. All right, welcome City Council, so, or Town Council, so good to see you. 
Uh, first item is uh, citizens' comment period. This time is provided by the board to allow citizens the opportunity to address the board on issues of importance of the citizen. No individual citizen shall be permitted to address the board for more than three minutes. Uh, I have a list of citizens who have asked to speak. Uh, first one up is Mr. Monty May. So if you'd like to come up to the microphone and give your name, address, and tell us what you have. Monty W. Mays, 2896 Snaps Mill Road. I'm a former commissioner of revenue for this county for 31 years. Thank you for your service. Uh, Mr. Woodskill, Reverend Jones, Mr. Hinkle, Mr. Hips, Mr. Carter, thank you for this opportunity to speak tonight. All right, let's get this started. The Wingfield family is a salt of the earth family in this county. When you step on their toes, you step on our toes. How many toes were stepped on? Raise your hand. Thank you. Never in my 50 plus years in politics have I witnessed such a blatant and total disregard for respect and a total and disregard for fairness during the Bobby Wingfield situation. Unlike Michigan, Mr. Hinkle, unlike Pennsylvania, Mr. Woodskill, Unlike Pennsylvania, Mr. Hips, Virginia, especially Appomattox, Virginia, treats their county employees and their county voters with respect and fairness. This respect and fairness has propelled three of our distinguished citizens to become members of Congress. It has prepared two of our distinguished citizens to become state senators. One of them is my wife's grandfather, the late Honorable Charles T. Moses, Jr., Sr., excuse me, and two other citizens, one of which is still living, two became delegates in Richmond. The Honorable Watkins M. Abbott, who was, who said that he was trying to we was going to try to be present tonight, but I don't think I see him in the audience. Anyway, we as citizens strongly oppose the firing of Bobby Winkfield and the lack of transparency that has evolved during his firing. Uh, during his firing, there is no mention of a vote taken in the minutes. And Mr. Woodskill, I strongly can't imagine you voting against somebody after you've been in the office only 22 days. That's unbelievable. We strongly suggest your being respectful and fair in the future with your actions, or you can be you can rest assured that none of you will be reelected in this county. Your odds of being reelected in this county, the way you're acting right now, are slim and none, and Slim just left the room. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mays. We appreciate that history lesson on those famous Virginians. Okay, next we have Dennis W. Torrance. Mr. Chairman and gentlemen, my name is Dennis Torrance, 4878 River Ridge Road. I had the honor a few years back of serving on the Appalachian County Board of Supervisors. Consequently, I appreciate each one of you for serving us today. In 1963, I came back home from Virginia Tech to be an ag teacher. Two years later, I had to go in the Army. And during the Vietnam era, I did not go over there, but I did have to go in the Army. And local government leaders at that time, in appreciation of my military service, guaranteed my teaching job when I came back home. And they kept their promise. Since that time, we as a community have proudly treated all our county employees with equal respect and compassion, 
until recently when you voted three to two to fire Bobby Wingfield, who has worked aggressively for us for 19 years and only a year from retirement. There isn't a more dedicated couple than Bobby and Renee Wingfield in their wonderful community. I strongly and respectfully encourage you as a board to right this wrong and continue our long-term record of treating all our employees with respect and compassion. The alternative, as I see it, presently stands as embarrassing, inexcusable, and will surely affect us in our future hiring and county employees. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Torrance, and thank you for your previous service, both military and on this board. Next up is Pat Torrance. I am Pat Torrance from the Outmanders River District, and I live at 4878 River Ridge Road. I want to remind that the Constitution and the Code of Virginia states that local government acts as an agent for the state of Virginia. The reference for this explanation is in Article 7 of the stated Constitution and Title 15.2 of the Code of Virginia. I recommend that you adhere to these laws for the state of Virginia. I'm just saying that should at the issue that's being proposed for discussion tonight need long-term legal actions, the taxpayers of Appomattox County will be paying, not you. Thank you, Ms. Torrance. Next is Linda Mays. Good evening. Linda Mays, uh, 2896 Snaps Mill Road. Mr. Hips, I'm in your district. My roots run deep in Appomattox County. My family has always been very politically involved. As a matter of fact, let me give you a little history lesson from my family as well. My great-great-grandfather was on this Board of Supervisors in the 1890s, and he was a part of the group that built the new courthouse when the old one burned at the historical park. And I just found out recently there's a safe on county property that has his name on it, the first Charles Moses. My grandfather, Charles T. Moses, served in the state uh, Senate for almost 30 years. He married a lady named Jenny Godwin and from Isle of Wight County, Virginia, and her nephew, Mills Godwin, Jr., was lieutenant governor and elected governor twice. My father, Charles T. Moses, Jr., was on the town council and mayor of Appomattox. And my husband, who just spoke a few moments ago, was commissioner of revenue for 31 years. So yes, indeed, my roots run deep in politics and in Appomattox <coughs> County. Uh, I have been mostly on the supportive role, but recently I have become very upset after the, your last board meeting. I strongly oppose the termination of Bobby Wingfield and the way it was handled. He was hired in 2004 as 911 coordinator and later was given the title of public safety director. During his employment, he has been a part of the response to four major events. The pipeline is explosion, number two, the aftermath of the eight people who shot and killed in my neighborhood in January 2010. Number three, the tornado recovery in February 2016. And number four, the COVID-19 vaccination clinic, clinic in 2020. Those are four very major events. These are the major emergencies, but there were snowstorms and ice storms and flooding which required his oversight. After almost 20 years of employment, without any reprimands or bad evaluations, he was informed on January 23rd by Mrs. Adams that the board had voted to terminate him. There was no option to resign, no option to resign or we will terminate you. I think that's disgraceful. Once again, I strongly oppose the termination of Bobby Wingfield and the way it was handled. If you agree with me, please raise your hand. 
Thank you. Mr. Hips, I will be seeing you at many more of these meetings. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ms. Mays, and thank you for bringing me more up to date on history of mathematics. I appreciate that. I'm learning a lot tonight. All right, next up is Barbara Williams. I'm Barbara Williams, and <clears throat> excuse me, I reside at 187 Azalea Lane here in the county. I am here in support of Bobby Wingville as well. I uh, worked with Bobby for five years of my 35-year term as circuit court clerk when Bobby was hired as the first 911 coordinator. Bobby was in and out of my office frequently uh, looking up addresses, and he couldn't have been nicer. He was a pleasure to work with during all the five years that I worked with him, and I know him on a personal basis as well, but I had a working relationship with him. And I never have heard anyone make any negative comments about him during that time. And I really don't understand why, if Bobby was not performing his duties as he should, why wasn't he, that was, why was that not addressed in an evaluation to at least give him a chance to improve after 19 years of working for the county and two years away from retirement, and then you choose to not even give him the opportunity to resign, but fire him. Uh, I just, it's, it's just very upsetting to me, and if I were a county employee, I'd be very worried about my own job if I have to deal with that. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Next up is Michael Duncan. To the Board of Supervisors of Appomattox County, thank you for your service to the residents of Appomattox County. Thank you for your time and your attention tonight. I am new to Appomattox County. I've only been a resident since July of last year, and I have jumped in with both feet to ministry at Grace Hills Baptist Church as their pastor and in March to serve the county residents as an election poll worker. Service is both an honor and a calling to me. As I begin time in a new community, one thing to which I pay attention is how the community treats those who serve the community. Those people include our first responders, fire and rescue, police, sheriff's deputies, and also our local school teachers, coaches, staff, and administrators. Included in those who serve are our community employees and you, our supervisors. And as good citizens, our responsibility is to do right by these who serve. When we fail to honor their good service, the community suffers. When we fail to respond when that service is found lacking, we as a community suffer. And when long time proven and trusted servants of the community find themselves relieved of a job to which they have been given, to which, to which they have given 20 years of their lives, trust is lost and the quality of work declines for all. Questions follow, and the accounting of actions taken must be examined. If wrong has been done, it must be addressed transparently. So my prayers are with you in your work. My prayers are with you in your discussions and in your decisions. I'm a man of faith who believes that all things will be brought into light. I am also one who believes in grace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. And I know that takes process, or that process takes time. So you are in my prayers as you are called to lead in that process. Thank you, Pastor Duncan. All right, next we have appearances. These are scheduled times are provided by the board to allow citizens and organizations outside the county government to discuss matters of importance with the board. Our first item is resolution in honor of National FFA Week from February 17th to the 24th, 2024. Attached for the board's consideration is a resolution in honor of National FFA Week, February 17th to the 24th of 2024. Is uh, Ms. Braylon Ford, APMAG Senior FFA Chapter Reporter, 
is present to accept this resolution should the board approve it. Staff recommends considering adopting a resolution in recognition of the February 17th to 24, 24, 24 as National FFA Week. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Moved by Reverend Jones, seconded by Mr. Hips. Any discussion? Mr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Hips? Aye. Mr. Webskill? Aye. Reverend Jones? Aye. I vote aye also. So the revolu resolution has been approved. Uh, the resolution <coughs> states, resolution in honor of National FFA Week, February 17th to 24 of 2024. Whereas, FFA and agriculture education provide a strong foundation for the youth of America and the future of food, fiber, and natural resource systems. And whereas, FFA promoter, promotes premier leadership, personal growth, and career success among its members. And whereas, agriculture education and FFA ensure a strong, steady supply of young professionals to meet the growing needs in science, business, and technology of agriculture, and whereas the FFA model, learning to do, learning to learn, <coughs> earning to live, living to serve, gives direction and purpose to these students who take an active role in succeeding in agricultural education, and whereas FFA promotes citizenship, volunteerism, patriotism, and cooperation, and whereas Appomattox County High School and Appomattox Middle School have agricultural education programs and 100% membership in the National FFA organization. Now, therefore, it will be resolved that the Atmax County Board of Supervisors does hereby recognize the week of February 17th through the 24th of 2024 as National FFA Week, adopted by the Board of Supervisors of Atmax County on this 20th day of February 2024. And Mr. Hips, if you'd like to present that to, if she's here, I believe. Oh. Since Mr. Hip sponsored the resolution, I'll give him the honor to present it. I want to thank the FFA and their members. It's it's something we truly need. And <clears throat> once upon a time when I was uh, in zoning and planning, we always said they don't make any more farmland, so why do we want to change it into something else? So uh, thank you, FFA and FFA uh, teachers. And we did. Next up, Sheriff Robbie Richardson. Sheriff Richardson has requested to appear before the board to discuss a salary supplement. Sheriff, you're on deck. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Board members, thank you all for having me again. If there's something to take away from tonight is I am not asking for no any money like last week. So there is something good to come from this. Uh, I'll come before you tonight, and the first thing is there's three salary adjustments I'd like to ask for. Again, this is no new money. This is money that's already appropriated within my budget. Uh, the first one will be for the sheriff's stipend that's been, uh, it's the same amount that was given to the sheriff last year for the past four years. I'm asking that that same stipend be put into the sheriff's stipend um, currently. The other two would be for both secretaries. I'm asking for a raise for them. I've already got this money in my budget. They are working hard and diligently. One of them is an evidence tech. She handles all our stuff, including murders and anything that needs to go before the uh, uh, jury trials or any of that stuff. The other one, she's the administrative assistant. She does everything that keeps me running, keeps the department running. She's a foundation to her department. Both these ladies are, are great individuals that deserve a raise. I'm here just to ask if, if it's okay if I give them a raise and also the sheriff's stipend with money that's already appropriated within my budget. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, someone on the board like to make a motion supporting the sheriff? So moved. Reverend Jones has made a motion to allow the sheriff to take the actions he described. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Wolfscale, second. Any questions or comments? Mr. Carter? Yes. Mr. Hips? Aye. Mr. Wolfscale? Yes. Reverend Jones? Aye. I vote also. You can
go forth and do good things, Sheriff. Thank you, Yana. Uh, Yana. You support. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of the things, if I can and follow up with it, we've got these <coughs> citizens here that are all, uh, obviously citizens of this county, and they're concerned about the issues going on within this county. I came before you last week to ask for four new deputies. I want to address that while they're here to listen to this. Just this past weekend, we had a young female, a juvenile, overdose on fentanyl. Deputies were the first ones on scene in Minister Narcan. If they couldn't have been there in time, who knows where that could have went. Thank God for our, our great uh, rescue squad that came on scene and helped out. She's alive today. If we don't get help soon, that's a potential that may not, ha may not happen. We're going to be hours before we can get to calls. These are issues we're having in today's world, and they are issues within this county. We need help. The sheriff's office needs help. And I'm coming pleading to you in front of our constituents and say, I need more deputies. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. All right, next up is Lindsay Hicks, Social Services Director. Ms. Hicks, Director of Social Services, requested to appear before the board to discuss her FY 2025 budget request. Okay, I have some packets for the board. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Ms. Adams. My name is Lindsay Hicks. I am the Director of Appomattox Department of Social Services. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight and introduce myself as the new director for the department. I've been with Appomattox Department <coughs> of Social Services since 2015. And with the Virginia Department of Social Services, this year will be for 15 years. The current mission for the Department of Social Services is an agency of human service professionals equipping families with resources to triumph over poverty, abuse, and neglect while leading the charge for a flattered system of programs and services that promote self-sufficiency, safety, and well-being for all. So a little background on the department. If you look on the front page of your packets, quoted directly from the Department of Social Services website, the Virginia Department of Social Service develops and administers programs that provide timely and accurate income support benefits and employment services to families and individuals in the Commonwealth. These programs assist citizens and as they transition from dependency on public assistance programs to self-sufficiency. Appomattox Department of Social Services is locally administered state supervised agency. The department is governed by a three member board also known as our local Department of Social Services board. You set policies for, for, for personal practices and oversee operations and implementation of the federal and state programs offered to citizens of Appomattox County. The Social Services Department is divided in three units. We have our Administration Unit, which manages all administrative functions for the department, human resources, clerical, recruitment, budgeting, financial services. We have our Eligibility or Public Assistance Program, which is also known as Benefit Program Specialist. They administer federal and state programs such as TANF, SNAP, Child Care Assistance, Medicaid, and Energy Assistance programs. We also have our Protective Services that provides protective services to the most vulnerable citizens in the county, which include foster care, family first, child protective services, adult protective services, and adoptions. <coughs> you have before you the Appomattox Department of Social Services preliminary budget request packet. In your packet, the contents include the approved 23-24 budget, the preliminary budget request for FY24-25, our budget match rate reimbursement sheet for the Department of Social Services, that's on the left side of your packet, and documentation provided for each line item request. For FY24-25 proposed budget increase, please note the highlighted sections on the preliminary budget request for FY24-25, that's on page three of your packet. Budget line 812 and 817. So budget line 812 and 817 are full reimbursement from the state as noted in the match rate reimbursement worksheet that was provided. As of January 2024, Appomattox Department of Social Services has a total of 20 adoptions the department is funding. Budget line 812 is 4E federal funded adoptions. In 2024, the federal state allocation that was provided was 425,404 as of September 2023. 
This was an increase from the initial allocation of $357,033. Budget Line 817 is State Adoption Subsidy, which is also known as Special Needs Adoption. In 2024, the federal state allocation that was provided was $26,468 <coughs> from the state as of September 2023. The total allocation proposed was $45,044. The department has requested additional funding in the amount of $18,575 due to two adoptions that were achieved. The department is anticipating an additional <coughs> five adoptions in the next fiscal year. Due to increased caseloads and the amount of finalized adoptions, the department has requested additional funding in budget line 812 and 817 from the state to cover cost of the number of adoptions finalized. <coughs> so if you'll take a look also at budget line 855, <coughs> 855, 858 are a staffing and operations budget. It's also known as 858 for staffing and operations pass through. That's the administrative cost. So it's for personnel services, salary, and wages, the request is being made for budget line 855 to fill all vacancies at the department. The personnel services will include the cost of the continuation of the current salaries and fringe benefits, the cost of planned salary increases, and the fulfillment of these eight vacancies. The department currently has eight vacancies that are currently being advertised. The staff shortage is projected to be filled in fiscal year 24-25. The line item includes the cost of living, so the COLA increase, and the proposed salaries that are in conformity with the comp compensation plan that was adopted by our local Board of Social Services. The COLA increase does include the 2% from December and then an additional anticipated 2% increase for the upcoming fiscal year. In 2024, the local allocation that was provided to the department as of September 2023 was in the amount of 294187 in the proposed budget for FY25, the requested allocation is in the amount of 372,587. So the difference between the two allocations is 78,400. When fully staffed, the department will have a total of 25 employees with the department. In conclusion of my budget request, the numbers that have been proposed will meet the needs of Affomatics County. I've worked with the state in configuration of these funds that are needed for this fiscal year. The department is requesting level funding across the board for all remaining line items that you see. In addition, if additional funding is requested, the department will make the recommendation at our mid-year review in December of 2024. This proposed budget will serve our constituents well. I would like to thank you. I would like to thank you again for this opportunity to introduce myself and present my budget. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I'll be happy to look into it and get an answer for you. Any questions? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robert Jones. So how are things coming along as far as renovating that space? It seems to be in dire condition. Well, respectfully, in lieu of everyone's time this evening, any questions pertaining to renovation regarding the building, respectfully, could be addressed at a later date. I'm happy to set up a meeting to discuss any concerns or questions <laughs> that the board has about our current space. What well, question? Are there state funds? for renovating that space? There could be, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Any other questions from board member? Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak for you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And a well-prepared yes, report and well-presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next, Mr. Don Jones at Max Tourism Committee. My name is Don Jones. I live at P.O. Box 229 Concord. Actually, I live in the Stonewall area. May I approach, please? Yes. I knew you would have handouts. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. First and foremost, it's, it's, it's hard to believe that uh, the Tourism Committee, as a 501c6, has been in existence for seven years. 
we just started our seventh year. And I, I think about that and the time that we spent putting all this stuff together and the things that we've done in those seven years. And, and all I can say is time flies, especially when you're having fun. I come here tonight to thank you for the funding that you've given us in the past and to ask you for continued funding for the future. The packet I gave you tonight reflects a lot of what we've done in 2023. And I would just like to highlight three or four different events. Uh, you can read at your pleasure. Uh, you had a, a synopsis that I wrote several weeks ago. That's probably, that is in your packet. But I'd, I would like to uh, uh, talk for a couple of minutes about uh, a couple of things, three things as a matter of fact. First and foremost, this year, we, we, or last year, it was printed in the fall of the year. In the back of your packet is this 12 panel new Appomex County brochure. This, count, this brochure replaced actually three other county brochures. This is the brochure that currently you will find in any welcome station along the interstates. Everybody that have seen it has complimented us on this effort. This was not a small task to do this, uh, to put, put all the pieces together and then have it printed and distributed. Secondly, as I speak tonight, in my hand is one of the most popular items that we can give tourists. We call it a pad map. This is currently in its second revision being printed as we speak. Unfortunately, I don't have the new copies. This is the older copy that has been revised and updated. It shows everything that needs to be said about downtown uh, Appomattox and includes a whole lot of places tourists can go outside of the county. Uh, one side, uh, this is the back side of this is downtown. The front side is around and outside of the county itself. So these are two of the two of the things that we've been able to accomplish. This Appomattox magazine here was a Chamber of Commerce project that was completed in 2022. But I brought it with me tonight because all the editing and most of the pictures and a lot of the copy in this magazine was written by the Tourism Committee. <clears throat> so we've had a major effort in this. All of you know that we are all volunteers. When I look around the state of Virginia and, and look at the tourism bureaus and business and convention bureaus, most of those bureaus are funded couple of them that I know of, one very close to us, it's almost $200,000. <laughs> Folks, we're doing this for free for the county. And I would just like to ask for your continued support that we can continue to do this. We've made major strides over these seven years. As an example, most of you know that, uh, especially you, Mr. Hinkle, know that at the railroad festival this year, we had the Vietnam Memorial wall, traveling wall. Not only did we have that, we had the war on terrorism flag and an Afghan presentation as well. I can truthfully tell you from Friday night through Sunday at five o'clock, people lit that wall virtually all the time. I was there Sunday morning, or Saturday morning, excuse me, in the rain. People were there in the rain. At 1 o'clock, when it stopped raining, you couldn't see the wall for the people. We, we purposely ran a four-day television commercial starting on Tuesday through Friday to draw people to Appomattox. That we did. Had it not rained, I think Railroad Festival this year would probably have been the largest festival that we've ever had as a direct result of that wall being here. At the same time, I was able to get an on-site WSET reporter <clears throat> live on air at 5.30 and at 6 o'clock, and again at 7 o'clock, they repeated uh, the 5 o'clock 
or 530 program. He was here. He stayed for an hour and a half at the wall interviewing people and talking to them about what it meant. Personally, I, like John, probably know people's names on that wall. I do. I have two very close friends on that wall. And every time I'm there, I get emotional. I'm sorry, but I do. That's just another one of the things that we've been able to do. This year, our downtown uh, window promotion, we had all but one merchant downtown decorate their windows. And everybody that we talked to that looked at those windows was thrilled about the fact that the downtown was totally decorated. Working with the town, the entire downtown was decorated. The train station, all the street lights were up, all the poles were decorated. It was really, really good. As you most know, we took two events that we normally do in December and combined them in one. We had well over 3,000 people there on the night of the tree lighting ceremony, along with the largest Christmas parade that we've had in quite a few years. And thank you, Mr. Carter, for your great job in the announcement. And please don't go away so that we can continue to use you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but those are just some of the highlights. This, this, this book, if you take it and read it, will share with you some of the accomplishments. As another, just another highlight, the, uh, the National Park, their visitor, rep, uh, their visitor numbers, and these are just off the top of my head, they're written in here, was about 83,000 in 2023, or 2022, was over 91,000 this uh, past year. The museum went from 12 to 16,000. Tourists are coming to Appomattox. Another thing that we're in the process of doing is combining all the websites that we have in this county dealing with events into one site. And all the other sites, including Experience Appomattox, will be linked to that one site where you will find everything that's going on in Appomattox County uh, listed. We are planning a whole slew of, of things for the commemoration week here in about six weeks. It's about time as soon as I get the National Parks uh, programming. We will be making a commercial to include not only the National Park, Carver Price, the, and I'm sure as you will, uh, hopefully you all know that the Appomattox Station Battlefield is now in the hands of the P uh, Appomattox Petersburg Society. That is a great thing. That's another site that we can promote. Uh, there will be walking trails. There will be more interpretive signs. And, and, and most people that I talk to who are not from this area have no idea that we're any, there was any fighting here during the Civil War. So with your help, we can continue the effort that we've made. And I would like to thank you again and request that you continue to fund us because only 40% about, uh, about about 40% of what we use comes from the county. Another 40% comes from the town, and we fund the rest. So thank you very much, and please help us in the future. Are there any questions? Well, Mr. Jones, I'd like to, you know, <clears throat> add on to your comment that, yeah, I don't think the railroad trust will be the railroad festival without Mr. Carter being the MC. Uh, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Uh, the other question I have, in going down this current member <coughs> list, I, I'm surprised that there's not more businesses on here because you do such a great job of bringing business to them. I would think that they would want to join your organization and be supportive of it rather than just reaping the benefits. Mr. Hinkle, that's a great point. On the 27th of February, we're going to address that issue out at the Inn and Suites Very good. with uh, Central Virginia folks and us are getting together to talk about that, because I agree with you. I, I really do. Any questions from the board? For those who'd like to come to a board meeting, we meet the third, uh, we meet the last Tuesday of the month, excuse me. I get so many meetings in my head, I forget which, which one we're talking about. Well, we meet the fourth, the fourth Tuesday of every, every month, uh, we've been meeting at the Appomattox Inn and Suites, and that's where we will be next week. 
Any questions? Any more questions? Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lashley, I've been thinking about the passion of the audience. Is there anything that we might be able to respond to their passionate pleas? Uh, are we talking about with regard to Mr. Wingfield? Yes. Well, unfortunately, our hands are tied. It, it's personnel matters are confidential. And so it isn't something that several of the citizens mentioned transparency. Well, personnel matters by state law and by definition are not transparent. They are, are done to protect the privacy of the individual and, and to protect the, the processing of the way personnel is handled in any county. And so I, I'm not sure what we could say that wouldn't potentially violate the confidentiality of, of the personnel system. Thanks. Any board member have a question for Mr. Laxley or that? All righty, let's move on to action items. Action item number one is the addition to the agenda to talk about <coughs> board policy regarding uh, voting. And I'm still kind of vague about what exactly you're looking for, Reverend Jones, so if you would care to expound. Uh, yes, sir. In order to be able to expand, <coughs> I'm going to have to go back to some specific situations. Um, the first situation was when the library board was fired. Uh, that was not an agenda item, but the motion was made, second, and the library board was fired. After carefully considering that and going back and looking at that decision, I realized that I had allowed myself to kind of get carried away because everyone that was speaking, they were reflecting my worldview. So I made that split second decision, which was poor governance, because that's not the way things should have been handled. But if we had been following what we, our guidelines, that would have never happened that night. It would not, that was not on the agenda. And then when I came back to the next meeting, I wanted to get it on the agenda and I couldn't even get it on the agenda. Okay, then the second thing is the personnel matter that um, these dear citizens are here to address tonight. Um, we come into a board meeting and I'm shell shocked. What? It's not on the agenda, which of course is a personnel matter, but I felt like the decision had already been made, and as a board member, no one contacted me. Nobody had a conversation with me, and of course I argue my point against, this is a community man, and the community sentiment, that's not the way things are handled in Appomattox. It's not the Appomattox way. Now, me talking like this tonight, I've already been told I'm on the list. They gotta get rid of me. That's right, Al Jones has to go. And now, what I'm saying is, I just want to know how we're going to operate. I think every board person here has the interest of this county. We may differ on what the best interest is, but I want to know how we're going to operate. I can't get something on the agenda to try to get it straightened out, but yet major decisions can be made, and it's nowhere on the agenda. So I just, that's why I brought it up. Now, either we need to eliminate it or we need to follow it. So what is your recommendation that we eliminate? Uh, closed sessions? No, sir. No, sir. What, 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 I'm, what I'm saying is I don't want to come to a board meeting and out of nowhere I find out 
that a long-term employee is going to be terminated. And that decision has to be made tonight. I think that's a rush. I, th I think it's ill-advised. And I think that that particular um, governance on our board was put in place so things don't go down like that in the heat of a moment. You have a, every board member has a chance to ask questions, find out what's going on, and then make an a informed decision. So I think moving forward, I think it's just not good governance. If we're going to be able to bring something up and vote on it that night, shouldn't it be a vote? Because I feel like my voice is not being heard. So I want to make sure that my constituents and Piney Mountain and all the citizens of this county, that they understand what's going on. I think it's unfair for the citizens in this county not to know what's going on. And it's, it's unfair for Ms. Adams to take the fall. If the board decides that that's what they need to do, I think it's the public ought to know what people's positions are. That, that's all I'm saying. So, let's. Sir, I don't know how long you've lived here. I've been here 40 years. And this is the way I can manage board of I've been here 40 years. You might not like me, but this is the way Appomattox County does. Ma'am, are you addressing the chair? No, I'm, t I'm telling you going on for 40 years. They do what they want and don't like it. Tough. Ma'am, I, 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 Mr. Chairman, I think that everybody on this board cares about this community. And we may differ about what we do, how we do it, but I think it's a public interest in certain matters in the county that require a roll call vote, that require some serious deliberation and thinking before we make those decisions. So I just want to know if we are going to govern this board by not being able to bring up certain issues without other board members knowing that that's the direction that the majority of the board is going in. I think it's unfair for that just to be thrust upon other board members. Now, I don't know much about politics. I pastored for 40 years, but, you know, I, I believe in this community, and I think the Appomattox way, you know, taking in consideration uh, our hometown people, I, I think that we should do that. So if the board decides that we can come in and just make decisions like that, then, you know, that's what we'll do. But I, I, that, do you understand the clarification that I'm trying to get? Uh, because what I get out of this, Reverend Jones, is, is your first issue is that you don't feel well enough to form ahead of time before coming to a board meeting. Well, I say, well, let me add to that. When we make certain personnel decisions in this county, I think coming out of closed session, it should be a roll call vote. I think the citizens of the county should be able to know where we stand. And I don't think Ms. Adams should be the person that, okay, Ms. Adams just terminated someone. I think that's unfair. I think our citizens deserve to know how we stand on certain issues. And that's all I'm saying. Well, Mr. Lashley, for my clarification, you know, I've been on this board for four years, and I've sat on personnel committee and went through interviews for prospective county employees and whatnot. And my impression through all that is, is that the day-to-day -day operation, i.e. personnel manager, matters, are strictly at the, uh, by the human resources and, and Ms. Adams, and that the board is more or less just, you know, they come to us to advise us what's going on, that we're really not decision makers in that matter unless I'm 
misunderstood uh, something along the line. Um, well, I've got a closed session item to discuss this. I'd rather discuss that in closed session than out here in the open. Because <coughs> we do not vote on anything in closed session, period. So. Right. You can't vote, you can't vote on anything in closed session. So, Mr. Chairman, what I'm saying is when we come out of closed session, there should be a roll call vote. No names have to be called, and every board member needs to be on the record. And I, if you go back and review board minutes, there are things that we discussed, like, for instance, uh, an item last, last month we discussed in closed session about whether or not to do a contract item. When we came out of closed session, we voted on that contract item. So there we followed policy. But that was our preview to make that decision. And what I hear legal, our legal um, advisors say that everyone has to be in agreement. If we vote, we have to be in agreement. If, if we come out of closed session, if I'm understanding correctly, if there's someone that does not agree with that decision, it needs to be a roll call vote. Am I? To add something to the agenda that's brought, you can amend your agenda by a majority vote. If, you, if one of the supervisors raises an issue during supervisor comment, to act on that would require unanimous vote. So if it, if it was raised on, now coming out of closed session, again, if the board of motion is made, it's, it, it basically is in essence a, like a motion to amend, we're adding something to our agenda after closed session, and then the board could vote on that after. If, if somebody objected, then you'd first have to take a vote whether it's acceptable to add it to the agenda. But typically, if it passes, that means there was a majority to put it on the agenda. My, I guess my concern is it was never placed on the agenda. Well, and, and again, we, we're going to have to go into specifics, which is a closed sure. session matter. I've, I've got it on my list. Yeah. <clears throat> so, anyway, Reverend Jones, it appears that most of your questions need to be answered in closed, closed session. All right, next we have a consent agenda. The consent agenda includes approval of bills, minutes, supplement appropriations, light items, transfer, fund transfers. Any item or consent item shall be removed from the consent item agenda to request the board member prior to the vote on the consent agenda. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be considered by the board individually. Is there any additions, removals, questions on the consent agenda? Those changes, motion to approve the consent agenda as printed. So moved. Is there a second? Mr. Hips moved to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Wolfskill uh, seconded. Any further questions? Mr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Hips? Aye. Mr. Wolfskill? Reverend Jones? Aye. I vote aye also. The consent agenda is approved. Next is the attorney's report. Uh, no report, Mr. Chairman. Administration report, Ms. Adams? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. There were a couple things that I wanted to bring attention to the board. First of all, you have a handout from um, an event organizer for June 15th for the Cortland Festival Park, and they would like use of the parking lot for that event. And it's, it's an email that I gave you right before the meeting that I had received over the weekend. I guess this is the same one we approved last month, but they had requested approval of the... Well, it didn't come before this board for approval because it's in the town of Appomattox. So they're asking for use of our property just for that event, for that day. And it's from Cindy Hall and uh, Patrick Wash. They're having a country music festival on June the 15th. They've um, received permission from the school board and they would like permission from the county to use the little lot. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve that request. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Is a second? 
Mr. Wolf, still second? Any other questions? Um, Ms. Adams? <laughs> also, we had a, um, an inspection today at the animal shelter, and it was a surprise visit because they had received a complaint. But um, uh, is that a point of order? Should we clear our motion before you go on? With yeah, the you probably control? should. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Latching, is this not the uh, very issue that we're talking about? We we just took an action item out of the administrator's report. Yeah. Well, technically, again, if it's unanimous, everybody's okay with it, then you're fine. If somebody objects to it, then it needs to be added to a future agenda. So, it, it, if uh, if everybody's unanimous for it, then no problem. But if there is somebody that would rather see it on a future agenda, it needs to be put on the next agenda. And I think a head nod would be sufficient, Ben's It's just use of our property. We typically don't vote on it. We just kind of you're, you're just okay. you're just seeking board guidance. Yeah. So if you if you don't get a motion, if everybody just tells her it's okay, that okay. what she's after, that should be fine. So we got a motion and a second. And just a head nod. Sure. Everybody okay with Reverend Jones? Okay, I'm using yes, part a lot. Yeah. All right. <coughs> um, Remember these things. Yeah, and I, maybe I should have worded that differently. Also, we had an inspection today at the animal shelter, and uh, it was based on a complaint received, but I'm happy to report that the state vet sent all no negative findings. Everything was good at the shelter. So I thought that was good news to report. Also, you have a, um, an email from Dr. Raymond just um, communicating his support for law enforcement. So I want to make sure you read that before our next budget session. Um, also, the, the Courthouse Construction Committee, they've met a couple of times, and we are making progress on the old courthouse construction, and they're providing an update at the March 18th meeting. So um, anybody from the public or board that wants to come and hear that update, we'll be having that on the 18th. <coughs> and hopefully they'll have... We have conceptuals. They'll be showing the conceptuals as well as a 3D design software. So you can kind of get a visual of what that looks like. And uh, that's all I have to report this evening. Right. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Uh, additional in your packet is a social service board uh, appointment. Uh, <coughs> free review is a letter from Ms. Barbara Williams thanking the board for her reappointment to serve on the board. At Manning Social Services Board, and then there's also the Robert E. Lee Water and Soil Con Conservation District meeting. District meeting minutes. At this time, we have supervisor concerns. Mr. Wilskill, any concerns? Reverend Jones? Um, yes, sir. One of the concerns that I have, I see a situation being set up where Law, law enforcement support versus school support, they being at odds against each other. And I don't want to see that become um, an issue here in our county where, okay, we're going to take away from schools in order to be able to take care of law enforcement. I think we have to do both. And I just don't, I'm concerned because I kind of see that kind of being set up. I think we can take care of the schools and take care of law enforcement too. Thank you. Mr. Hicks? No, sir. Mr. Carter? Uh, just one, Mr. Chairman, that is, I would like to see a updated report <clears> of <throat> any kind of movement uh, at the transfer station that is at Concord. I don't want to let that to slip through our hands, and I'd like to have a report on that. I'd like to have it monthly, whether there's action or no action. And Mr. Chairman, I have one more citizen concern, if I can find it in my pocket. Um, it's dealing with the trash situation um, here in the county. Uh, I received a call as well as pictures. Um, here it is. Sorry. Uh, from Mr. Uh, Jason Jason Smith, Walnut Hill Road. He has approached us before about the issues. Um, he said he's cleaning up tires. Um, Bob Sawyer, Cy Sayer, pronounced his name wrong. They have most of the road frontage there, um, even mattresses thrown um, on their property. 
and I asked him about the possibility of putting cameras up, and um, he feels that he, I guess he feels like he pays his taxes and he shouldn't have to buy cameras. But I was wondering, Mr. Chairman, if it's appropriate to ask Ms. Adams, can, can we look into what other counties are doing to see, um, because this is the second time that he's approached um, the boards, that he's just, just really fed up of cleaning up, you know, not only just trash, but tires, mattresses on, on his property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Aaron Jones. Yeah, trash is a problem. I know that over in my area and every time I drive to the Evergreen Trash Center, why it's that whole <coughs> old Bethany's just littered with trash on the way to the... Mr. Wilson, go ahead say something. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I remember when that came up the last time and I came up and did you talk to you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to share that when we moved on Poor House Creek Road almost 20 years ago, it was a litter box. It was just, we we picked up trash on a two and a half mile stretch because that's the minimum you can do if you sign up with VDOT for adopt a highway thing. And we and pick it up two or three times a year. And the first couple times we picked it up, we had mattresses, sofas, tires, parts of cars. We got, the first time we did it, we got like 60 bags of trash and in two and a half miles. And we kept doing it. And VDOT puts up a nice little sign, up the highway by so-and-so, you know, on both ends. And we just kept picking up trash. And, and, I, and I submit, by doing that, there's less. Lit now we pick it up, it's, it's maybe a dozen bags, 15 bags. Um, so I think if you set an example, I understand that he represented, he pays taxes, he shouldn't have to do it. But sometimes we got to do more than pay taxes. And um, I, I, I said back then when he brought it up the first time, I'd be happy to come talk with him, talk, meet him and talk to him and tell him how the state helps you. They provide the trash bags, the signs. All you do is bag it up and let it sit. The, the VDOT comes and picks up the trash sure. then. Sure. And, it, and it makes the street look nicer. And I think basically what he's saying is that's what he's been doing mm -hmm. for years, picking up the trash. And he's just at a point now yeah, you know, I shouldn't have to clean up mattresses and tires and wash machines and that type of thing. It's mm -hmm. just too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand. It's, yes. it, is, it is a problem. Thank uh, you. I guess my only concern is I read in the town minutes where the Mayor Connor is not getting any response from the chairman of the Atmatic Supervisors Board to have breakfast. And I'm having the same problem with Mayor Connor. So I, I don't know where the disconnect is. Uh, I'm still waiting for a phone call back from him. So. All right, at this time, we're ready to go into closed session. All right. <clears throat> Whereas the Board of Supervisors of Appomattox County desires to discuss and close meeting the following matters. Discussion, consideration, interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, or resignation, specific public officers or appointees or employees of the public body concerning E911, consultation with legal counsel pertaining to actual or probable litigation where such consultation and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of the public body concerning trash authority lawsuit, consultation with legal counsel employee retained by the public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel concerning committees, Carver Price, vocational training facility, board of supervisor authority, and a manual tire. And whereas pursuant to sections 2.237, 11A1, A7, and A8 of the Code of Virginia, such discussions may occur in closed meeting. <clears throat> now, therefore, be resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Appomattox County does hereby authorize discussion of four stated matters in closed meeting. Need that as a motion. I'll make it a motion, Mr. Chairman. Sir, thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Wilson, seconds. Mr. Carter? Aye. Mr. Hibbs? Aye. Mr. Westgill? Aye. Reverend Jones? Aye. And I vote aye also. We are now closed, going into closed session.